Hi there, Renoisers. So we're back with another tutorial, and today I will be focusing on the signal follower, this thing that comes with Renoise, uh, focusing on its basic use, as well as some more advanced stuff you can do with it. So let's get right into it. I've started out with a basic four on the floor kick drum using Renoise is a default 909 kit. And the thing we have on the track here is, of course, the Renoise signal follower. So um, probably the most obvious or first use that everybody will end up using this for is going to be for sidechain compressing. And I will use that as an opportunity to also explain the controls. But first, we've got a synth sound loaded. And we'll put that on a channel. That's quite loud. So as you can hear, it's just some basic uh, super saw sound that comes loaded with read noise. Now, with the signal follower, the first thing you'll notice is this uh, destination line. Um, so this is the track that it is going to be affecting. So right now, CT is the current track. So anything in the signal follower will um, affect uh, another device on the current track. So if we had a gainer here, we would be able to select the gainer on the current track. Now, to get it to uh, activate on another track, we will just name our tracks here. and hit this destination button. And now it's heading to the super saw track. So anything that it does here will affect a uh, device on the super saw track. And we're going to put a gainer there. Now we can select the gainer and have it affect the gain. And it will give you the values. Um, now for sidechain compression, this is like a uh, basically the amplitude of the signal will affect the parameters that are being uh, altered. So we have the gain in the gainer and we're just going to leave it as it is for now but bring this maximum to about 0 dB so it's not clipping and we'll see what happens. Awesome. So you can see that with every kick, the amplitude of the kick affects the gain of that gainer. So the typical easy use will be side chaining. And what a lot of people will do is just change these values so that the minimum is zero and the maximum is uh, whatever you want to duck it to. And then this will start it so that uh, the default will be zero and then the kick will duck the sound. And you can hear that obvious side chaining effect where it's like wah, 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 wah. Um, that would be probably the most obvious use for, for the signal follower and what most people get introduced to it for. And then um, you can also uh, use these parameters to uh, to just fine tune the settings a bit. So you can use a look ahead to make sure that your signals are being ducked correctly if they have very fast transients or something. You can adjust the attack and the release. And the sensitivity. And also you can use a low pass and high pass filter on the original signal. So those are some of the options you have. Um, the other one that people will usually use a signal follow for, and I'll just mute this, um, is just going to be an envelope follower. Um, so I will load up 
a random break beat. Um, we will use one of these rhythm labs things again. And we will just uh, take whatever breakbeat comes to mind here. That will do just fine. So I'm going to just have this sample trigger, trigger. we'll sync it. And we will put a, another um, signal follower on this track. We'll mute the kick and we're going to put a filter on here and destination current track filter cut off and there you go you have a envelope follower Ooh, I don't want to do that And you can adjust the sensitivity and scaling as well. So that's another useful device that will uh, take the amplitude of the signal and then change it to filter settings. Um, very commonly used, you can use it as a way to filter like drum loops and stuff or, or get like very interesting percussive sounds. Uh, I recommend it on guitar, uh, you know, any instrument that has a very like uh, percussive element will usually uh, uh, work very well with this kind of uh, signal following uh, filter kind of thing. So you can get several pretty unique sounds. Um, let's go and put together uh, just a simple beat with this. Uh, and we'll turn our kick back on and we'll just add uh, some snare and also some hi-hats and we'll make this beat a bit more interesting So we have our snare sound and we'll use our signal follower and put another one of those in and then we're going to put in our EQ and this is a neat trick. Um, so what I like to do is change this up and then we want to go in here look at the full display and change the cue down to a reasonable value and then we'll bring this to let's say about 200 Hertz and you'll see something very interesting here can see it's ducking the individual band of the EQ uh, with a lot of precision. So that is linked to the signal follower and you can do this to duck very specific frequencies and have a dynamic EQ and change the sensitivity. And um, this is really good in case you need to take uh, an offending signal. So you have a very ringing snare and you want to just filter that frequency without uh, the whole sound getting too affected. Um, it, it's generally a bit better uh, if you just want to have a lot of ringing and say the attack of a sample, um, but not uh, the rest of a sample. And it'll get rid of that without affecting the tail of the sound as much. So you can generally do some pretty neat uh, dynamic EQing stuff with the signal follower. Um, the other thing I will show you, which is really cool, 
is with the signal follower um, you can and that's gonna be very annoying we will take some white noise here and then we're just going to go into the sample editor we're going to trim this down and this is just very very simple uh, white noise and the reason I'm using white noise is just because you will see in a second but this gives us a very fast attack sound all right so we have a simple pattern here and what I'm going to do is turn this on and now normally uh, we can have you know a sample or a synth playing but sometimes you're using a synth and you're like wow this is an awesome super so saw sound but I wish it had a trans gate or something like that and with the signal follower you can actually do that so we're just going to go to our track DSPs and go to our signal follower if we can find it and of course we're going to set this to super saw gainer gain and we'll turn this one off so it doesn't interfere and we will set this to normal we'll just put this at 0 db and the other thing we'll do is put a gainer on here so we're not hearing any of this sample and you can hear right there with this now with the signal follower affecting the gain we have a super saw sound uh, with the trans gate on it so let's try that with without so that's a very cool trick you can do and those are just some of the things you can do um, I'm going to go with one more and just show how the uh, signal follower can also be used to affect um, parameters on VSTs so I'm just going to load something very simple uh, the Tell Electro 2. So we're just going to give it a standard buzzy sound. And we're going to mix in the second oscillator, not the third. And we're going to take this instrument automation here. Uh, for this, we're going to put in OS 2 FM. And obviously we need another signal follower, destination, track two, instrument automation, os to FM. And that lets you sidechain the kick amplitude to the FM frequency. So, I hope that gives you an introduction to the signal follower. You can see how powerful this will be uh, in any of your productions and the kind of neat and subtle things you can do with it. Um, so, as always, um, if you like this, please leave a comment on my YouTube channel and keep on renoising.